you know, but bottom line is the lead sources do drive traffic to your website, to your CRM, keep you guys busy making phone calls. Um, so the biggest question is why are we using internet? You know, what's what's so big about internet? I mean, uh, we have a couple of people that are new to the internet. Um, and so, like you said, you just started working in your store. You didn't sell cars before that at all. I mean, you're literally just, okay. So it's good because um, you're not going to have you know, the habits of someone who's been doing this 20 years in, in a way so that you're going to be able to just jump right in and, and figure this out a lot quicker. Um, what's interesting is, I mean, we've, we've been talking about this for years. More and more people are buying stuff online. Uh, I was just uh, reading on, um, I actually picked this up the other day, internetretailer.com. It's, uh, they have blogs about different trends and how people are buying stuff on the internet. 47% of people were purchasing things online. And that's actually up from 38% in 2011. So who knows, next year we'll probably get over 50% or 60%. People are buying stuff online. Uh, I bought this laptop online. I bought my iPad online. I bought my camera online. Everything that I do, I, I go online um, because it's just simpler. It's mailed to me. I don't have to go crazy with it. I don't have to worry about someone trying to talk to me and trying to upsell me on stuff. It's just right there. Uh, what's interesting about the internet too is, uh, you know, we're in a very—I would say we're in a sort of much of an affluent area. I mean, we've got Long Island. We've got a lot of very big areas there. Sixty-three percent of the people that do buy stuff online, they make over hundred grand a year, and then forty-four percent make less than hundred grand a year. Still, a big percentage of people buying stuff online. I mean, who here hasn't bought something online? Everybody, right? Amazon. And, okay. Uh, what's even more interesting is 50%, and you actually get the number gets bigger. Uh, people use smartphones. Who here has a mobile website for their dealership? You have a mobile website? You have a mobile? We have a mobile website. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's amazing. Uh, there's dealerships that still don't have it. You know, at the very least, get an app. There's companies that have apps for dealerships as well. Um, that is big. Um, mobile website, just. On that. Okay, mobile website. Basically, your uh, your website provider. Uh, can basic, who's your website provider? Ford. Okay, Ford. Okay, that's right. So, uh, basically, Ford. Uh, you have to pay them a lecture. They'll they'll make a website that basically will fit in with uh, whenever I search on my iPhone for a dealership and I get on their website, it'll be mobile friendly. It'll have basic buttons. Yeah, what they'll do is they'll make it optimized. They'll exactly. make your website optimized so that when you are looking at your website, let's say, your oh, yeah. uh, and it'll it'll load quicker. Mm -hmm. It'll exactly. be just friendly, more geared towards whatever they're looking to do, as opposed to all the extra stuff that sometimes you put on a website that somebody that's looking at your phone would not really need. Exactly. Oh, right. You can't like you can't see the staff page on these. Right. Every time I always like went on it because I played around with them for hours. I'm a nerd when it comes to stuff because I love what I do for a living, but. What I, I mean, I, I just know you can't you can't look your reviews on them. They keep it very simple. Mainly, it's you know new car department, used car department, service parts, contact list directions. That's generally how simple they keep it. Uh, but it's what's nice about that is I don't know if you know, but uh, a site that's not a mobile site, you could access it on your iPhone. But I don't know if you realize it actually kills your battery life because there's so much bandwidth and so much data in there. Uh, so that's partially why they use it. Plus, they try to keep it really simple. Uh, just like you know, just like your Facebook apps and everything else, just keep it really, really simple. Uh, so if you don't have a mobile website, I definitely would research it because that's how your customers are shopping for stuff. I mean, imagine how people there's people out there with who don't even use a computer; they use their iPad, and iPhone for everything. Um, you know, so that that's one of the one of the biggest things. Um, let's go into internet lead management. Okay, this is. One of the biggest things that I uh, that I look to be very important. Uh, well, like I said, the majority of this workshop is about process, and how you should handle leads, and I believe it's a hundred million day process. And I'm going to be able to go around the room and find out from everybody here what their belief is on how to handle the internet lead uh, from the very beginning to the very end, uh, to the point where the customer either comes in or doesn't come in, or the lead becomes you know, dead or lost. Uh, so uh, before we uh, really get into it, um, I want everyone to basically just write down, you guys have something to write on. I want everyone to basically write down what your strategy is in your store for handling leads. 
I'll give you guys about three to four minutes just to write down what your strategies, how do you handle the leads? We're going to discuss that, and we're going to compare it to what I got. And, as far as the duration, or as far as the duration, as far as uh, do you have an autoresponder? Does that go out? What happens? You know, once you call the action, do you uh, do you call the lead first, then you email them, stuff like that? How long do you go? Do you have an outline process for your store? Mm 